<laughs> hey everybody welcome to tuesday live it's time to party and get your scrap rack organized Woo! this is how i warm up right i kind of missed my warm up uh just before we started and my son is harassing me my other employees are harassing me everybody thinks that must be fun to be you but uh, I get a lot of harassment from the people around. My husband harasses me. Anyway, super happy that you joined me today for Scrap Racking 101. And yes, it is a verb. I didn't really know it was a verb until the last show that I was at. And someone said to me, when I'm scrap racking, and I was like, hmm, that is a good verb. I like it. So now we're going to, that's what we're going to call it, Scrap Racking 101. Okay, I'm going to start off this day <laughs> with a little story. I hope I didn't already share it with you guys. I don't think I did, but every time I think of it, it makes me smile. I was at the, so I'm going to share it again. I guess that's what I'm saying. You're my audience. You're going to be subjected to, I guess, whatever I want to talk about today. Okay, I was at the Puyallup Scrapbook Show. Puyallup is um, the show that's like our in our backyard. It's like 20 minutes from our warehouse. And um, we didn't get a booth there because we're not special enough. But I went there and um, I met some really great people there. That was the first time that I got to meet Sean from Scrapbook um, Expo, Scrap and Stamp Expo. He runs the crops there. Just a great guy. Super fun chatting with him. That's not my story. Okay, I'll, I'll quit goofing around. Okay, so I'm standing in the booth, the Islet Outlet booth with Suzanne, the owner, talking. And this little girl is kind of looking at me, kind of sideways. She was maybe five or six, and um, maybe seven, but right in that. And she walks over to me and she looks at me and she says, are you totally Tiffany? And I was wearing this apron. And so I thought maybe she's just reading my apron. And I said, yes, I am. And she said, Oh, I knew it. My mom and I watch you and listen to you all the time when we're working in the craft room. And her mom was kind of standing behind her. And I said, oh, that's awesome. I go, is your craft room all neat and tidy and organized? And she goes like this. Oh, no, it's a horrible mess. And her mother just went six shades of red, but it was hysterical and it was very, very cute. And every time I think of that, it's a horrible mess. I just think there's so many people out there with that challenge of getting organized who would like to put their hands over their eyes and say, it's a horrible mess. My mission is to help you not have a horrible mess. So there's my little cute story for the day. I also want to do a couple of call outs to people. Um, first one, going out to Bonnie Block, who, if you downloaded the Scrap Rack um, brochure with all the details in it, on the very back, there are some um, customer testimonials. And um, she downloaded this for class today. And then I got an email from her that said, hey, I was so excited to see that my testimonial was one of the ones that was on the back of the brochure. And so I just want to say hi to Bonnie and thank you so much for being part of the Scrap Rack scrap racking crew um, for years and for sharing your testimonial with me so I could share with everybody else. Two things I asked uh, or suggested that you download, both of these are available on the website, but they're really gonna help you follow along and give you all the information that you need. The new scrap rack catalog is available for purchase on the website if you want the full color version. Um, the catalog, the cost on it, and you know what, I'm saying this and I think it's not visible yet, but it will be. The cost on the catalog is $5. And when you buy the catalog, shipping is a penny. And when you buy the catalog, um, you're going to get a $7.50 coupon. You can only do that one time. You can get a catalog or each time we release a new catalog. And the reason we do that, people have said to me, why don't you just give it away for free? And the reason we do that is because um, when things are free, People ask us for, you know, they, they, they'll get on the website and order five or 10 of them, right? Maybe they want to share them with their friends. I don't know. But we found that when we give things away for free, they don't have any value. So if you need a catalog and you want the full color catalog, you can download it for free. It's clickable. That'll click you right to our products for free. Um, 
But if you want one that's three hole punch that's gonna fit in your scrap rack, then you can buy it and you'll get a $7.50 uh, coupon off your next purchase and that's there's no restrictions it's just seven dollars and fifty cents so you're getting your five dollars back but i want you to choose um something that you're going to use and last but last but not least on my call out list uh i need to say great big hi to the tucci crew um maya tim ashley all y'all that ha are supporting me today as my at home local audience so thanks so much for tuning in even though you're just right around the corner from me i appreciate that all right Next up, let's talk about last week's winners. Woo! So every week we give things away. There's an enter to win link in the text that's posted on the um, underneath the uh, video today. So find that link. You have until Thursday night. To, so if you're not able to watch live, I know a lot of you that are watching now, you're all live. You could click and enter to win right now. But thanks again to Terry Wiegand. We extend the contest for two days. So if you can't watch because you're at work and you're watching later, you can still enter. So make sure you click on that link and enter. Last week's winners, each of them win a paper storage bundle. Deborah Jones from North Carolina, Laura Davidson from Arizona, Sharon Maldonado from Texas. I don't know where you live, Sharon, but my sister lives in Avery, Texas. You should look her up. Uh, Lila Ship from California and, oh, Cindy Starnes from right, right here in Washington. Woo! So, Congratulations to all of them, and we will get your prize packages on the way to you as soon as we know where you live, because all we have is your name and your email address. Uh, but Leanne is on that now. All right, so let's get started with the scrap rack and all the wonderful good things about it and all the details on it. One of the challenges with the scrap rack <laughs> is that it actually does so much and can handle so much that just the idea of it um, and discussing it gets overwhelming. And that is the whole point of this session today is I'm just gonna take you through all the craziness of the scrap rack and all the different things that it will do. And then this is a recorded video. So if you already have one um, and you need to go back and revisit the information or you're thinking about getting one, you can refer back to different parts of the video that uh, make sense to you or that you had questions or that didn't make sense to you or that you have questions about or whatever. So. First thing we're going to start with is what is it? When you unbox your scrap rack, you are going to have um, 10, 11 pieces in the box. I have to think that through. You are going to, this is called the base. It has these hanging things in the back. Those are the hinges that put the base into the right angle, right? Now, one of the things that happens all the time on the box, it says to put your hinges in place, and then you get this long pin. And so you line up the hinges in the back, and then you slide the pin through. I don't have my glasses on, and it's all black. So, oh, I did it. Look at that. So now this is what it looks like on the box, right? And then there's some fine print on the box that says there are four rubber feet. Turn it over and set it on its feet. And a lot of people miss that, and they don't turn it over and set it on its feet. So they leave it like this. And then the next things out of the box are your two wings. I happen to have a magnetic ruler stuck on my wing. That's exciting. And they put the wings on. Right on my cheat notes on my desk. I'm gonna, right? And they say, okay, there's my scrap rack and it's all set up. And the thing is, it will work like that. You can leave it like that. Um, you're just going to have a lot of page sag and drag. So what you really want to do is tip it over on its feet. The back of your scrap rack, you should see the scraprack.com wings out at the side. You got this nice angle on your desk. And if you love magnets like I do, it's all steel. So you can put your magnets on it like my magnetic ruler. Or if you want to do cute magnets and you want to cute it up, right? It's all, they're all going to work however you want to, however you want to make it look. Then, so you're getting the base two wings, and then you're gonna get seven spinders. I only have three with me, but a spinder is the three ring section of a notebook. And it's, so we call it a spinder, which is a cross between the word binder and spine, spinder. They have commercial grade hook and loop fabric on the back, which is adhered with adhesive and also with rivets right? So we try to make sure that it's not going to come off there, but some of you abuse your spinders 
load them, load them, load them up. And sometimes after a while, when you pull them off, uh, the Velcro might slip around in that adhesive. You can just add a little bit more adhesive to the between the metal and the Velcro if you want to stick it back down. So um, it's going to stay there because of the rivets, but I know some that kind of bugs some people if it starts to pull up like that. So you get seven of these guys, and the trick to the spinders and putting them on your base unit, um, well, there's not really a trick. It's kind of a... Um, what works best for you at the moment, right? So one of the things about the scrap rack is that when you first start setting it up, it's not gonna have very much stuff on it. You're gonna build it into something that's got all of your things, but initially you've only got a few things on each spinder. And so then you're gonna wanna keep your spinders further apart, right? That's gonna give you less page sag. As you fill your spinders up, you will end up moving them closer together. Some people find, depending on how your spinders are loaded, and I'm telling you, it's different for everybody out there. So some people find that it works best to put their spinders over with the rings overlapping. Some people find that it works best to put their spinders at a little bit of an angle on the base. And some people find that it works best to put their rings overlapping at an angle on the base. So all of this spinder arrangement is going to be unique to uh, how many spinders you have on your base. Like I said, it comes with seven. It'll fit up to nine. Some people don't use all seven. Or, um, some people add nine. I know my good friend Merle France figured out how to cram 11 on a base unit. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but it's all going to depend on how thick your your spinders are loaded with pages and dividers, how they're going to line up. But it's just a little bit of a fine art of moving them around to where you're comfortable um, and controlling as much page sag as you can. And I'm going to talk more about page sag in just a minute as we go through the process here. So one of the other cool things about the scrap rack is that it's expandable. So when you look at a single base unit, that's only 15 inches of space, right? And you think, oh, I'm going to need more than that. I'm going to need at least double that. Well, one of the beautiful things about the scrap rack is that it's so easy to expand. You don't have to reinvent your organization system. You don't have to um, rearrange everything in your collection. You just get a second base unit. So this is an expansion base. It comes with this little wrap around Velcro, not Velcro, sorry, hook and loop fabric piece. And you just thread the hook and loop fabric piece through the two base units, through the slots in the two base units, link them together in the back, move your wing to the outside. Voila, you've just doubled your space. So now you can go from nine notebooks, nine three ring sections worth of stuff to eight three ring sections worth of stuff. One of the reasons the scrap rack works so well is because when you add your supplies into it, you're eliminating all of the packaging and airspace, right? You're able to consolidate things down into the smallest possible space, which allows you to maximize the amount of stuff that you're going to see and use within that space. All right, I'm just going to work with a single base while we're going through the rest of the process here. I have my handy dandy cart. I know some of you guys are going to ask me about the cart. It's a Trinity. It's a Trinity brand cart. I bought it on Amazon for about fifty nine bucks. The height between the sections was too short to hold twelve by twelve, so I sent my husband to the hardware store and he cut PVC pipe a little bit longer, and we replaced the middle sections with black PVC pipe, and now it's tall enough for twelve by twelve. There's a video about that um, on my YouTube channel. I think if you search Trinity cart, you'll see a little video about how I did that. All right, so why does the scrap rack work so well? It's because not only is it a tool, but we have a system for actually organizing your supplies so that you can find them every time. And that's the four section system. I'm not gonna go into it very heavily right now because we're supposed to be talking just product today. But the four section system is alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments A to Z, the calendar year and the rainbow. We'll get a link up to it for you if you're unfamiliar and it'll take you through all the details of that. Also, if you downloaded the Scrap Rack brochure, um, there's a four section system details in there as well. But on our website, there's also a video about it and all those good things. So let me show you though, we'll give you a little 
quick demo of, of all of the things in the four section system well, as I talk about how they work and why they work. So you're getting kind of, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this down where you would normally put it. Um, I don't have my demo scrap rack here, so you're kind of seeing a piecemeal of a demo scrap rack. My scrap rack is actually traveling to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where we're gonna be, woo, Saw, alert, alert, alert. I didn't even talk about this yet. We are doing the craft room cleanup for those of you who last year we had a contest uh, where we picked someone and we are going, Karen and I are going to her. Well, she actually, she owns a couple of crop houses. Um, now I'm going to say the cozy, cozy crop in and I, that doesn't sound right to me. I should have written that down. Um, in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, near the Lancaster show. So Karen and I are going to go to that crop house, her crop house, for two days before the Lancaster show, and we're going to do a total craft room cleanup there. So if you are following us on Facebook, and probably on Instagram too, we'll try to do a lot of live posts as we're going through that. But for two days, we're going to work in her crop house, and then we are going to do a big reveal after we get everything all cleaned up. If you are in that area, we are gonna do an open house at her uh, place on Thursday night. So uh, Thursday the 20, I think it's like the 24th. So if you're in that area, you are more than welcome to join us, watch our page, we'll, we're gonna tell you all about it. Okay, sorry, uh, back to the four section system. First section is alphabets and numbers. Anything that's alphanumeric, but not theme specific, and you're gonna group those things all together. So that if you're working on um, a page, a goodie bag, a card, a framed project, any kind of project, and you need words or letters, you know where you're gonna be able to go to find those things. So I'm gonna ask Max to kind of zoom in on this page right here so you can see um, sort of our shut your flap tabs in use, right? So you see these little colored tabs? Those are our shut your flap tabs and they're sticky to the, so you stick them to the flap and then they pull the flap down, right? They're not sticky enough to like stick the flap closed like a piece of tape, but they pull the flap down. If you don't use them, everything still works, but occasionally you're gonna find that one of your flaps, and I don't know if you can actually see this on the screen or not, one of your flaps was left up, and when you closed your pages, it got stuck up. Um, so you can solve that problem two ways. You can tuck it behind the product for a while and that's gonna hold it flat for a while and then it'll go flat. But if you're using the shut your flap tabs, that is their mission. The weight of the tab is gonna pull that flap down and hold it down so that they don't get stuck up like that. This one's being very resistant. I'm gonna stick it a little bit and off we go. Another little tip, right? So this whole little session is gonna be full of tips and tricks. I had all these alphabet stickers and I put them in my scrap rack in order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? And I started on the front. So I said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, blah, 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 right? Well, then when you flip the page, it looked like things were out of order. And so I thought it'll be better if I could just go all the way across, right? So I can see 99% of the alphabet. I put the numbers on the front and then Y and Z on the, in the front as well. Um, but it's easy to see what you have. So you, you need to keep that in mind when you're organizing. Um, how can I make this stuff the most visible? How can I see what I have in the easiest possible way? So before I had A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L on the front. My son is laughing at me. And then it started over here with M and so I was constantly flipping back and forth to find those letters. Um, so putting them in the middle like this, I could see the vast majority of everything. So there's a little tip for you. One of the other questions I get a lot about alphabets is should I store them by color? And I, my uh, personal preference or what I think is the most useful is to store them by size as much as possible. It's not always possible. But the thing is, when you're looking for letters, you are looking for a particular size, right? If you're gonna write the word happy birthday on a four by six card, you are not gonna be using giant letters. They won't fit. You wanna see 
all the letters you have that are going to fit on that project. So storing your um, alphabets by size is definitely the preference. The other thing is you might be mixing up your colors, right? If you're trying to spell out 4th of July, you might want red, white, and blue. And if you have them organized by color, then you have to look at your red letters and your blue letters and your white letters as opposed to just going, okay, here's all the red, white, and blue and green and purple letters that are that size so I know that I can or can't spell out whatever I want to do. So that's your first section, alphabets and numbers. So anything that's alphanumeric, not theme specific, is going to go in this first section. The second section is themes and sentiments A to Z. These are all the things that you craft about organized alphabetically, um, animals, baby, beach, bath, time, travel, so that when you sit down to scrapbook that theme or event, you're going to go to that one section, travel, and you're going to see everything that you have for travel. It's all going to be in one place. You're going to be able to flip through and find everything quickly and easily. So those are the first two sections, Alphab alphabets and numbers, and then themes and sentiments A to Z. The third section is the calendar year, and this is all of your holiday and seasonal materials grouped together. So again, if you're going to work on fall harvest pages or Thanksgiving pages, you want to keep all those things together. Um, Halloween pages, they all have sort of the same color scheme and they have pumpkins and leaves and trees and all that stuff. And even though you might be using a pumpkin for Thanksgiving um, or you might be using a pumpkin out of your Thanksgiving kit on a Halloween page or fall harvest page, you want to see all those together. So um, alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments, calendar year, and keep this in mind. I want to keep things together that I'm going to use together. So when I'm looking for something, I'm seeing everything at one time. The other benefit to that is when you buy something new, your brain already knows where it's going to go. So when, it, when you get home from the store, it makes it really easy to put it away. Or when that box comes in the mail from HSN and it's full of Halloween embellishments or Christmas stuff, you know exactly where you're going to put it when it gets there. So you avoid that temptation then of stuffing it into the corner or the closet and waiting to put it away because you're not quite sure where you're going to put it. So it's one of the huge benefits about the four section system. Okay, the last section is the rainbow. And the rainbow is where you put everything grouped by color that doesn't fit into one of the first sections. So the idea is if you want to add something to your page that's blue or green, you can just go right to that section, whether it's a bling, a button, a flower, it doesn't matter. It's all right there. It's visible and it's accessible. The other thing that happens with the rainbow, besides the fact that it's pretty and you'll be tempted to just be like, oh, look at all my pretty things, um, is that you end up using more stuff because you can see it, right? So if you think, oh, I'm going to use a flower and you have all your flowers in a bin somewhere, that's all you see. But if you flip to your blue section looking for a blue flower and then you see, oh, I have this bling, I have the big bling, I have the sparkly buttons, oh, I could add this tag or this cute little bag, all those options, they're visible, they're accessible, and you're going to use more of your supplies and also more of what you know. As crafters, we take all these classes. We learn how to work with things like glitter and microbeads and tiles and bling and buttons, and then we kind of get focused on that one thing, that last class that we learned. That's where our supplies tend to be right on front of us from that class, so we use those over and over and over again. And then we take another class and we move on. This encourages you, all the classes you've taken, all the different products that you've purchased, you're going to see them all, which means you are going to spend, you're going to use more stuff from your collection, which means you're going to be spending your money more wisely. It's going to be more useful. Okay, so the four-section system, uh, alphabets and number, themes and sentiments, the calendar year, and the rainbow. And again, all of that in detail is on our website. So let's talk a little bit about spinders and getting them on and off your scrap rack. So I'm going to recommend that you have something like this. This is a bone folder. You could also use a butter knife when you're trying to get your spinders off and just put it in between the spinder uh, hook and loop fabric and the base hook and loop fabric, and then you can just pull it right off, right? So if you're going to rearrange your sections or you're going to travel with sections, that is the perfect way to get them off. Um, so let's talk a little bit about travel while I'm here. I'm at that point in the, um, so traveling with scrap rack supplies is awesome because you don't have to rearrange anything, right? You can um, either choose to take your entire scrap rack or you can choose to take small sections of your scrap rack. So there's a couple of different options. 
There's what we call a spinder binder or a 12 by 12 craft binder. And the difference between the two is the spinder binder does not have a three ring section inside it. It's just a cover with a hook and loop strip on the inside so that you can transport one section from your scrap rack to the event that you're going to. Kind of keep it simple, right? Just becomes a binder that's easy to move around. So it's called a spinder binder um, with or, or spinder cover or with no three ring section. If you want an additional three ring section, you can get it that way as well. It's called a 12 by 12 craft binder. So that will hold one section. If you're going to an evening event or a couple hour event and you want it, let's say you're going to work on birthday cards. You want to take a couple of sections with you, right? So then you're going to take your craft, your canvas craft binder, and this will hold up to three sections. It's got tool storage on the inside. It's got a big pocket in the back, comes with some extra pages. And then this front pocket is perfect for your paper trimmer, right? So you're going to slide your paper trimmer in scissors, basic tools, pens, markers. You're out the door quickly with two or three sections, right? So this is the canvas craft binder. Now, some of us like to go to crafting events, with a lot of stuff, and that is, through the magic of video, um, that is where the craft crate comes in very, very handy. So the craft crate is a collapsible plastic crate with a lid, and it has two rear wheels, right? This is what I was laughing about when I first came on set, because I threw this on this table like it was not going to appear later in the video, and here it is. Okay. So the beauty of the craft crate is that you literally can take your entire, where's my bone folder, scrap rack with you to an event or, and this is why this actually came into being, when I first started scrapbooking, oh, so I'll just tell you, all the little tabs on your apron wrap around the handles, right? This one's not fastened on there like it should be, but all these little tabs are going to wrap around. So this is a craft crate and the eight, we sell the apron and the crate together, or uh, we sell the two pieces separately. It comes in a couple of different colors. Um, so to so this came into being because I did not have a craft room. I was one of those people who had to bring everything out and put everything back every time I um, wanted to work on a project. And as most of you already know, I'm a little bit of a neat freak and that was really tough for me to haul out all those pieces. And I thought to myself, how am I gonna be able to move this around and put it away? And so the craft crate was the perfect solution because I could literally break down my scrap rack, take all seven, um, take all seven spinders off, stand them up inside the crate, fold my rack flat, put that in the crate, put the lid on it and then I could roll it into the corner or put it in the front hall closet and I had everything packed up in just a couple of minutes. And then when I was ready to craft again, I didn't have to spend a ton of time reorganizing everything or pulling everything out. It was literally as simple as taking everything out of the crate, setting up my base unit and then putting my spinders back on the base in the order that they belonged right? Super simple. Got even easier when I thought I can just put the lid back on the crate and then set my whole scrap rack on the lid. And now I can have it sitting next to me at the dining room table and I can just tip it back and park it over against the wall if I'm serving dinner, if I need to tidy up real quickly. So it worked great for at home, but it was amazing to go to a crafting event because I could literally take everything with me, pack everything up, keep everything organized, and it was just a couple of minutes to do that. So super simple way to get yourself organized and get your tra travel with your things quickly and easily <coughs> without having to spend a bunch of time organizing and reorganizing your supplies. So a really simple method for that, which was kind of the goal of this whole product line. How do I get and stay organized? How do I add things to my collection? How do I change my collection? So as we get into the tips and tricks uh, session, part of the session, I'll talk a little bit more about that, why it's valuable for changing your supplies. I'm gonna jump in right now to, what the pages look like. 
and how many options there are for pages. So you've probably noticed as I've been flipping through that there are different sizes and shapes of pockets. Um, well, that's not what I want yet. I want this one. There are different sizes and shapes of pockets. This is an example of what not, look, my son's behind the camera. He was just like, oh my gosh. This is an example of what, how not to load your spinder. So when you have your spinders on your scrap rack, this one's really massive. So, um, you can get, you, you can see what I was talking about earlier. When they're this full, you're not going to get seven on there. They just take up too much space. This one is overloaded. You're putting a lot of stress on the spinder, a lot of stress on your hook and loop fabric, but it works. It's still holding the pages. Um, you can still turn the pages. As you add sections and they're too full, your scrap rack is going to kind of stand up like this because you're going to have so much stuff that as you flip the page, you can't get to the stuff that's in the middle, right? That's how you know it's time to expand or divide and conquer. So what does divide and conquer mean? Divide and conquer means if you can, if you only have room for one base or for two bases. In a perfect world, having all of your supplies at your fingertips all the time is the ideal situation. Everybody doesn't live in the perfect world. So if you can only have space for one or two bases, but you need 20 or 30 spinders, there's a couple of creative solutions that scrap rackers have um, shared with me over the course of the last now 16 years since we've been making the scrap rack. And so one of them is, um, this was this is our solution, it was not one of the shared ones, but is to get yourself some spinder binders and store in the spinder binders things you don't use all the time or that are really specific. So if you had all of your um, Christmas things in a spinder binder or all of your football things in a spinder binder, you're not gonna be using those two things at the same time. You're working on your kids' football pages, you're gonna need that, but you don't need Christmas. So you can pull out what you need, put that on the base unit, and store the things that you don't need um, just on a shelf in your craft room. The original idea from this was brought to my attention by um, someone who was in that situation. They didn't have enough space. And so what they did was very simple. They bought those cute, the grid cubes from um, target that have the little round connectors on them. They bought an extra set and just zip tied in the shelves. And there's an example of this on our website. If you, um, maybe Karen can find that link and post it up. And so they had, they put in all these narrow shelves and then she was able to slide using a divider as the front and back cover. She's able to slide each of those spinders onto that shelf, label them, and then whatever she wanted to work with, she could leave like her rainbow on her scrap rack. But if she was working on Christmas, she could just pull off the Christmas and add it and put it back. And then she's working on football, pull off football, add it to the base while she's working with it and then put it back. So it made it really easy to have a lot more spinders, but not actually need, you know, six or seven base units. So which is fine with me. If you want to have six or seven base units, I think that would be great. And for some of you who are watching, have multiple base units. And if you can share those pictures on our Facebook page, that would be amazing because everyone likes to see that. I have right now a two base system. Mine has been up to as big as a three base system, but I just sort of weeded it out, which brings me to my next point. Well, I'm supposed to be talking about pages. I'm going to get there. Um, one of the beautiful things about the scrap rack is that you can really easily change the things that you're crafting about. So when you have little kids, you're crafting about different things than when you have adult children, right? So little kids, every holiday is important. You're taking tons of pictures. There's something going on every month. So you've got all these things. They, they're, they participate in all these activities, whether it's ballet or soccer or I don't know, we have this weird thing called DIY here, which is destination imagination. And it's, I don't even know what it is, but it's like a weird debate thing. But there's all of these things that you have as kit for kids. And then as your kids get older, all that stuff kind of disappears and you're kind of dialed into kind of some basic holidays. And then um, sort of whatever you're doing as an adult with no children, hopefully it's something fun like traveling around the world. Um, so you're, you, everything changes. And that's the beauty of the scrap rack. You don't have to reinvent anything. When you're done with cars and trucks and things that go, 
that section just goes, you donate the what's in there that you're not using, and then you that becomes an adult travel section, and it's just that fast and that easy. You don't have to rethink or re-strategize or buy new storage containers or anything like that. Okay, so let's talk about pages. Scrap rack pages come in three different groupings. And the first group is called the basic storage page group. Basic storage pages are all 12 and a half by 12 and a half in the usable space. And then they have the little three ring tab down the side of them, right? We made them 12 and a half by 12 and a half because anytime you're dealing with something that's 12 by 12, if you have a 12 by 12 pocket and you're trying to put it in there, it's very difficult. So we've got a little bit of a half inch of space uh, on the top, side, bottom, however you want it, wherever it's gonna end up for you, 12 and a half by 12 and a half, and all of the basic storage pages are that footprint, and then they're divided up into pockets. All of the pockets in the basic storage page collection are made out of the same food grade plastic, right? So this plastic is lightweight, but it's incredibly durable. So you already know paper is heavy. It doesn't seem like it's heavy, but once you start to load it up, it's heavy. So we tried to keep your pages, your basic pages, as light as possible to add the least weight to your scrap rack and to whatever you're carrying to an event. So they're super durable. Um, in the now 16 years that we've been making them, I don't think we've ever replaced one. Leanne, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because a hole tore out on the side. We have replaced them if the seams we're not seamed properly if it's a manufacturing defect. And so sometimes when they hit the seamer, they'll leave a gap and then things fall out the side or wherever. So I've seen manufacturing defects, but I've never seen anyone actually rip a hole. So they actually hold a ton of weight and they're super durable. The holes get a little bit wonky and stretched out, but they don't actually tear through. So basic storage pages come in packs of 10, and then we also generally offer a variety pack or two um, of different options. They all have this little crescent cut flap at the top of each pocket, and the beauty of that flap is if you're traveling with your supplies and the flap is closed and you have everything packed in, it keeps everything in where it belongs, right? If you're working at home and you have that flap, you can tuck the flap behind your products and that makes it really easy to pull them in and out of the pocket while you're working at home. So depending on what kind of crafter you are, you are gonna either tuck every, leave the flaps behind everything for easy access or you're gonna cover the flaps to keep things in place while you're traveling with your supplies. So the super size single is 12 and a half by 12 and a half single pocket. The double X, and so I have an empty one kind of overlaid over the top of the pocket right here. And I don't know if you can see that, if it's helpful to zoom in or if it's too glary, we'll see. So this is the double extra long, and this is great for anything that's six by 12. And really when you're loading up your pockets, oops, don't take the stuff out that's closest to the spinder. That's another tip. Load the heavy stuff closest to the spinder uh, and the lighter stuff on the outside. But, you can see I've got multiple things in here, right? This is uh, a whole bunch of pieces from of die cut pieces and then multiple stickers. So you can put multiple things in each pocket. Um, I'm gonna, this is gonna do the same thing again, so I'm just gonna fold it over for the moment. Um, you can put multiple things in each pocket. The goal is to put some facing forward and some facing backward so that you can see when you flip the page because the pages are clear what's on both sides, right? So the triple play is three long skinny pockets, right? They are 12, 12 and a half by four, right? Great for borders, stickers, that type of thing. The, Fanta or the Fabulous Four is four six by six pockets. Again, slightly larger than six by six because we're actually dividing up 12 and a half by 12 and a half. But these are great for tons of stuff. I mean, six by six is a really common size. They're also gonna work for things like unmounted stamps and stencils, right? So here's my little stencil tip. I just made a little paper with a lip at the bottom and I put the stencil in front of it. I used one of our shut your flap tabs to label the stencil. And the reason I did that is because when you slide the stencils in and out of the pocket, or no matter how you're storing your stencils, you know they get hung up on each other, right? So the little cutouts get hung up. So I just put the paper behind it with a little lip at the bottom, and then I could slide it into the pocket, 
it's easy to slide into the pocket. It's easy to take out of the pocket, but it's not getting hung up on the other stencil, right? So you can put multiple stencils in there, one on each side if you only want to if you want to be able to see them all, but you can definitely label, you know, they're so thin. You could definitely put four in a pocket easily. All right, the vertical four, for some reason I'm missing my sample in here, but uh, this is four long skinny pockets. So this is a favorite for obviously for borders, but people who use Kiwi Lane, if you're a Kiwi Lane person and you want to keep all your stuff in a binder, this page and this page are a great complement for most of the Kiwi Lane um, templates. Fantastic Five is four five by seven pockets and um, four five by seven pockets. What did I do here? Nothing. Let me put on my glasses. Four, things are locked. Four five by seven pockets and one little cute tiny pocket in the middle, right? So we just have this little empty space. So that little pocket survived there. This page design was actually submitted to me way back in the beginning by a customer. So one of the other things that happens um, here at Totally Tiffany with a lot of our products is that they're designed and developed based on your needs and your ideas. So I hope that if you have a need or an idea that you will take the time to shoot us off an email to customer service at totally-tiffany.com and share it with us. So this lady actually sketched out this page and said, here, this will fit in 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And we've been making it ever since. The six by four by six pockets. So these are great, of course, for anything that's four by six, which is super common in the scrap booking world. Also four by six um, photos. So if you've taken my class on um, creating a holding album or project planning, I like to use this page as each one of these pockets representing uh, the left side, right side of a double page layout. So I can put all the pictures for one side, one side. And then when I'm planning, I've got three double page layouts the pictures all laid out and planned for that. Also works great for unmounted stamps, another very common size in four by six. Straight eight is uh, six inches long, three inches wide, and again, great for all kinds of different embellishments. I've got this one loaded up with, um, these are like sticker letters that are plastic, so they're heavy and dense. Uh, great for even uh, unmounted, red rubber unmounted stamps. Simply squared, nine pockets that are four by four. Again, perfect for all kinds of embellishment storage. Do you see how visual everything is, how easy it is to see your supplies, how easy it is to get to them, all the little flat pockets. Now, a couple of tips about loading your pages. Load your heavier items on the inside closest to the spinder. Number one tip. Number two, if you're using things that are in packages, um, cut the top off the package if things are dimensional. So this is a dimensional uh, sticker, right? And these come on mounted on this little acetate sheet, okay? And if you don't, if you open them up and you just put them in your scrap rack, that's gonna be fine, but they have a tendency to get hung up on things because they're dimensional. So if you have a more than one um, package of them in a pocket, they're gonna get hung up on each other. So I just cut the top off the packaging and then I store the whole package right in my pocket and then I just use that clear envelope to kind of protect them, give them one more layer of protection when I'm putting them away. And again, you can put things in both directions. So as you flip the page, you would be able to see front side, back side of all of those. So that's another tip for you. Traders 12, perfect for uh, artist trading cards, right? Uh, three inches across by four inches deep. Next tip, put your taller things when you're choosing what pockets things should go in. If you can have the item go up above the flap, that's the best scenario because then it's going to prevent, then it won't be able to get pushed out, right? It'll push up against the flap. Um, if you have smaller things and bigger things together in the pocket, then put the smaller things in the back behind the bigger thing. You can see them from this side, but the bigger thing is going to make sure the flap stays closed and that the little things don't come out. Now, when I talk about little things like these chipboard embellishments, they're perfect in there. 
little things like um, brads and eyelets, you wanna put those in a small Ziploc bag and then put them into the pocket. And by all means, include them in your scrap rack. One of the beautiful things about working with a scrap rack is that everything, almost everything, I guess, is gonna fit in there. I mean, your goal is that you just wanna sit down and craft. You just wanna sit down and go to your travel section and work on travel without having to go to four or five different places in your room to try and find those travel embellishments or those travel stickers. So putting everything in there is really important. So when it comes to things like glitter, right, fill a little baggie, a little Ziploc baggie with glitter in every color that you've got and put it in your rainbow section, right? A little baggie of glitter will glitter the world. You'll have plenty for any project you're working on. So if you buy a three ounce jar of glitter, pour some into a baggie, put it in the rainbow section of your scrap rack. When you use it up, you can go back to the big jar and refill the bag. But if it's visible and if it's accessible, if it's right out in front of you while you're working, then um, you're actually gonna use it. Okay, those are all the basic storage pages, right? They all come in packs of 10 for $12 and they're all made out of the same material. Next, we have two pages that are called double-sided duos, and these are the same material, but they're double-sided. So the two by one has a six by 12 pocket, two six by 12 pockets on the front. Same thing, we've got the little pocket flaps, and then on the back, we've got the 12 by 12 pocket on the back, right? So these are ideal for, again, keeping things together, you use together. So in this example, I have all of these camping um, stickers, three-dimensional embellishments. Uh, they're, they fit perfectly into the six by 12 pocket. And then on the back side, I've got the bigger 12 by 12 stickers and some paper. And then I have another set of stickers in here that's also for camping that's not quite 12 by 12, but it fits right in to the pocket with the other one. So keeping things together, you use together. The two by one, two pockets on the front, one on the back. Now, the double-sided duo pages um, are 10 in a pack and they're $17.50. So you get twice as many pockets, but you save a little money there as well on that. Uh, the four by one has four pockets on the front and one the big pocket on the back. And the four by one is ideal for small categories. So I have an example here of um, March, St. Patrick's Day. Not a lot happening in my world for March. I have a few sheets of paper, a few stickers, a couple of die cuts, but everything is just in one nice, neat little bundle in a single page on my scrap rack. So the four by one is great for small collections. It also is a great page planner. It has two four by six pockets. So if you're trying to put all the pieces together for a page or a project, this might be a good option for you for that as well. So those are our double sided duos, right? 12 by 12 pocket on the back, smaller pockets on the front. The last group of pages that we make are called our um, specialty storage pages. And these are made out of a heavier plastic and a lot of them, the pockets have these little locking flaps. So this is the embellishment storage page. The pockets on it gusset out a little bit. They have a little locking flap, so that's gonna hold the tab on the front of the pocket closed. There's a pocket in between the front and back page because it is double sided. So you can put paper and scraps or bigger stickers in that middle pocket. Um, but this is designed to hold bigger, bulkier things. It is the only page we make that isn't 12 and a half inches wide. So it's a little bit narrower and that's because of the weight that will accumulate in these gusseted pockets. So you saw it probably in the rainbow section, right? So it's great for brads and eyelets and glitter and anything that you're going to bulk up. Um, this one I just have loaded with chipboard letters and kind of see. But you can still see through it. You can get to it. You can access it really easily. It's just a little bit narrower. So we put the tab on the top of this. If you want to label the top, there's a tab on the top so you can see that um, sticking up because it's not long enough on the side. The side loader single is a 12 and a half by 12 and a half pocket that loads in and out the side, right? Has a little flap that's supposed to go inside the pocket and that's gonna hold your paper in the, in the side from coming out the side, um, especially when you're traveling, not a problem on your scrap rack. Uh, this 
page will hold 10 or 15 or 20 sheets of paper cardstock, depending on how thick it is. So that's a regular question that I get asked, how much paper will that pocket hold? Well, paper comes in so, and up to cardstock comes in so many different thicknesses. 20 sheets of basic paper are gonna fit in here with no problem. Super thick cardstock, you might only get 10 or 15 depending on the brand. So that is the side loader single. I have in this pocket right here an entire travel kit, right? So one of the things that I'm always talking about is don't take everything apart, don't reinvent things, make it as easy as possible to put your supplies away. So this is an entire kit of embellishments and paper for travel. Rather than try take it all apart and put it into individual pockets, I just slipped it all into one side loader single. It's gonna be in the travel section. Once I use it and I start taking those pieces apart, at that point, I'll probably put it into smaller pockets so it's a little bit more visual. But um, you know, the first time I use it, I'm probably gonna use a majority of it and just have a few pieces left. And then I'll mix those in with the rest of my travel supplies. Last but not least, in the specialty storage page, is our flippin' storage page. And this was designed with card makers in mind and really evolved into something that scrapbookers love as well. This pocket has a little cover over the top with a notch that holds that cover down, okay? And that's because all the little pockets on the inside flip. So you've got four by six pockets on the top and five by seven pockets on the bottom. I'm gonna turn it back so you can see a little better without, because it's just clear. So if you don't lock it down, your pocket, your, your flipping pockets will flip everywhere. So that's why it has the little cover over the top put the lock through and you're good to go. So this one is all loaded up. Again, you, know, you all already know I'm a travel junkie, but this is all the uh, USA road trip things that I've accumulated, all of them together. So I've got big stickers and big embellishments in the five by seven pockets in the bottom, and then smaller stickers and embellishments by state in the pockets at the top. But really easy to flip through and see all of those things. And again, very consolidated so that if I'm gonna work on this particular road trip, I've got all those things together, but they're still in my travel section, right? So all the USA stuff, when I'm gonna work on that, it's there. But if I wanna use the passport, the planes, the suitcases, any of those things that will go in any kind of travel category, I'm gonna see those as well, because it's all gonna be in travel. Okay, so I mentioned that this particular spinder was a little bit out of control. Where did I put my bone folder? Do I have another one right here? Another blunt edge instrument. So, well, this one has some blunt edges and some not blunt. I'm going with the blunt. It's gonna slide that. It's gonna allow me to pull my spinder off the base really easy. Now, I'm gonna do a quick rearrange of my little part here. Crazy. Okay, so here's how you know if your spinders are too full. Well, <laughs> if you look at this and you don't know it's too full, um, maybe we have other things to discuss, but when you put your spinder on its side like this and you push all the pages over to one side and you pop it open, your pages should not pop off. They should stay on the spinder. So in order to get this spinder down to kind of where it should be, It's almost twice as full. Now let me try it here. Now I popped all these off. So when you close it up and pop it open, nothing should pop up. Now, I say nothing. If you have a divider on there, dividers are a little bit heavier and they slide around a little bit more. So your divider may pop off, that's fine. But if your pages are popping off when you bring your um, rings open, then you probably need to divide and conquer your spinders. So this is literally closer to two spinders worth of stuff um, than one spinder. Okay, if you're an overloader, if you're a spinder overloader, we do have a little bit of a solution for you to keep your rings from gapping open. Usually if you're an overloader, it's gonna be the top ring that gaps open because that's where the most stress is on your scrap rack. So we make a little pro product called a spinder sleeve. 
I thought I took some of these out of the package, but apparently no. So the spinder sleeves, you get seven sets in a package. And a set, you're not going to be able to see this. I should have colored these or put stickers on them or something. A set is too long and a short. You see that? Too long and a short. And all you're going to do is take your spinder sleeves and you're going to... I know you've probably seen this. It's very difficult. I'm going to mess here. You're going to take your spinder sleeves and you're going to put a long one on one side and then and they just kind of slide on there. If you're having trouble sliding them on, you can take a little bit of liquid soap and you can put the liquid soap on and it will help you slide them on and they're tight enough that the soap will get pushed out the end and you can just wipe it off. The one uh, caveat to that is it makes them slide really easily. So as they're sliding on, they're also, when you're closing the rings, going to be easy to slide off. So you just want to keep that in mind. You might want to try one with a little liquid soap. And I just mean like this, soft soap, something like this, just a little dab, and then your, your things will slide on. Um, so, but they're not that difficult to get on. So you're going to slide the long ones on each side, right? And then you're going to load your spinder with your supplies. And then you're going to add the short one. I don't have my glasses on, so that's probably a little dangerous. I feel, I feel pretty confident that it's there. Yes, it is. Okay. So you slide these all the way down so you have a little bit of a gap at the top. Then you slide on the short one. Slide it on the side where you have the longest gap. Tuck that around. And then you're going to close up your rings. These are really flexible. So now what you've got, then you're going to push them back together. Okay. So now what you've got is a little protective plastic covering over where the rings open up. So you'll be able to slide things around there. And then when you want to take things off, you're going to have to pop it open and pull them off. You, you might have to take this off to load pages, depending on what side you're loading onto. And then you just have to guide the rings back into the hole when you close it up and then relock your rings and you're good to go. So if you're someone who has overloaded their spinders or likes to have their spinders really heavily loaded, you might need to add spinder sleeves. Generally, it's only to the top ring. I know sometimes people add them to the middle and the bottom, but uh, my recommendation is start with the top and see if that um, solves your problem of things slipping out because your spinders are too overloaded. So kind of a super simple solution to that right there. Okay, what else do I need to tell you? Let me pull out my little notes here. Um, I was had some notes about tips and tricks. What did I talk about? I talked about cutting the tops off packages. Oh, when you're flipping your pages in your scrap rack, especially if you have um, your pockets open, like you've tucked the flaps behind the items, if you turn from the upper corner, right, it's a lot easier on your spinder, it's easier on your pages, and there's less risk than if you flip it this way and you kind of throw it over like that, that something might come out of the pocket because it doesn't have the flap closed or you have the flap tucked behind or whatever. So turn your pages from the upper corner while they're on your scrap rack. And definitely when you're traveling with a binder, right? So keep in mind, the pages of a scrap rack were designed to be at that angle. So it does keep everything in the pockets as you're flipping. When you're traveling with a binder, you may need to, um, you mean you want to keep that in mind, kind of hold it at an angle and turn from the top corner and that'll keep everything in the pockets where it belongs, whether you're using the plastic binder or uh, the craft binder. Um, large items in the front or in the closest to the spinder. Uh, we talked about that and also bigger things in the front of the pockets and smaller things on the back side of the pocket. So um, when you're choosing pocket size, the item that you're putting in the pocket should be tall enough to become above 
the cutout, and so it's behind the flap, and that's going to help everything stay where it belongs to. Um, and then I talked about spinder sleeves as well. Oh, what else can you put in your scrap rack? What else can you put in your scrap rack? You can put anything in there that you're willing to put in there, basically. So you can put washi tape in there. The thinner rolls of washi tape work better. But it's great for dyes. Put your dyes in a dye pocket and throw them in there in the right category. It's perfect for unmounted stamps. So whether they are red rubber stamps or the clear acrylic stamps, it's going to work for either of those. Um, it's great for card making supplies and card blanks. So a lot of our pocket sizes are going to accommodate your card blanks. So some of you are just card makers in general, and some of you make cards as, as well as doing scrapbooking and mixed media and those other kinds of things. Keeping your blank card, your card blanks or some of them in your rainbow section is super helpful. If you're going to make a birthday card and you look at your birthday embellishments and you go, okay, this, uh, birthday, you know, three dimensional sticker would be perfect on a pink card blank. Then you can go right to your rainbow section and grab out a pink card blank, grab out that birthday embellishment and put that card together. Same thing if you're storing your unmounted stamps in there as well. Now, take a deep breath. If you have thousands of unmounted stamps, um, then you're going to want to create a whole stamp catalog for those, which is a little bit different. I'm not going to talk too much about that today, but I do have a whole class on cataloging your stamps. Um, but if you just have a few stamps and you're going to mix them in by category, put them right into your scrap rack. You've got a couple of birthday stamps. If you're making birthday cards and you see that, oh, I'm going to happy birthday card, I'm going to go to birthday, and you see that stamp, you're probably going to pull it out and use it rather than remembering, oh, I think I have a couple of birthday stamps. Where are they? And going searching for them. So the more things you can put into your scrap rack, the more likely it is that you're going to use them. Embossing folders as well. Those are going to fit right into your scrap rack, especially, again, if they're particular to a theme or holiday or type of event. Something that says congratulations or happy birthday or Merry Christmas, those are obviously going to fit right into the four section system and into those categories. So the more things you can figure out how to get into your cattle, into your scrap rack, the better. For things that you can't figure out how to get in there, you can make a catalog page to incorporate them in. So this is a catalog page of red and pink washi tape. So in your rainbow section, some of you have taken my color catalog class, and this is uh, part of what you would include in there. But just as a kind of a short uh, introduction, if you take a sample of all of your washi tape and put it in, this would be in the rainbow section. Now when I'm creating something and I go to look for red and pink, I'm going to actually see and remember that I have this red and pink washi tape. And then I can go right here to my little shelf and pull it off and actually use it, right? So incorporating examples into your four section system is going to drive you back to your other products and you're going to use more products. This is labeled with where you know, this is in the 4L, which is what this is, a four level stadium arranger. So this tells me where to go to find the washi tape that I want to work with too. So it's easy to go back and forth between the two. This is titled Topia. This is something that was created by Creative Memories. It's in this skinny little envelope. If you put it in your drawer or in your tote or somewhere like that, it's probably just going to disappear. But if you slip it into a pocket in your four section system in the um, alphabets and numbers section, then you're probably going to see it every time you craft and you're actually going to use it, right? So anything that you can incorporate into your scrap rack, into your four section system, it just means that you're going to use that thing much more often. It might also mean that you realize that you never use that thing and you could probably donate it at the next crop or give it to your kid's kindergarten or the senior center, wherever you like to donate your craft supplies. So seeing everything in front of you all the time helps you use it, but it also helps you know that you're not using it. And that's maybe something that you want to purge out. All right, Max, have you got some questions over there? I do. Max has um, questions. Maureen would like to know, if only one half page is filled, do I put things close to the spinder or the outside pockets? And do I put the heavy pages at the front or back of the spinder? Oh, good questions. So she's asking, if you're only going to fill a half a page, where would you, where should you put your supplies? And they should always go closest to the spinder. So you always want to get the heaviest stuff. And if, if the corners are empty. So if you put the stuff 
on the outside, you put your supplies on the outside edge of pockets and there's nothing on the inside, that's what's really gonna cause the page to sag because there's nothing holding it in place on the inside. So load the inside pockets closest to the spinder first and then work your way out. Double up on the inside pockets first and then double up on the outside pockets as you go. So heaviest stuff to the inside. She also asked, how should she arrange, should she arrange the heaviest pockets on the back of the spinder? Um, Yes and no. It doesn't, it's not going to matter because you're constantly moving your pages from the front to the back, right? So the things that are on the front are going to become, when, once you open it, now they're on the other side at the bottom. So it's just more important that the heavy stuff is toward the spinder rather than where on the spinder heavier pages are. Um, I tend to put my spinders in this, in my section or my pages in each section by pocket size. So I put the smaller pockets on the top. So things like the 12 by 12 or the Trader's 12, and then it would be the divine nine or the simple, simply squared, which is nine. So I have smaller pockets getting bigger towards the back of a category. And that way you can see through more levels of the smaller pockets. Or if you take a 12 by 12 pocket, put it on the top of the category, you can't see anything that's behind that. Not that it's a huge difference because you're going to be flipping anyway, but I like to be able to kind of see through um, each layer of a category. So I put my smaller pockets, which is a higher number, Trader's 12, and then I count them down to the super size single, which is the big 12 by 12 pocket. What else? Rhonda asks, can you use these pages for embossing folders or do you have a specific page for those? I have several different sizes, including 11 and a half inch long ones from Anna Griffin. You can use any of our pockets for um, embossing folders. So whatever size they fit in is going to be fine. Um, I have a couple of the long, I was looking for them, um, of the long like border embossing folders. So depending on how you're storing them, are you keeping them together with other pieces of that kit? Or are you storing your embossing folders all together in a section that's just embossing folders and creating a catalog? But any of our pockets are going to, are going to, hold the weight of an embossing folder. And again, if you don't have a ton of them, um, I would really recommend putting them right in the category. So I have a bunch of like little birthday, um, small birthday embossing folders and some birthday borders all in the birthday section. I see them whenever I'm working on a birthday category or a birthday card or a page or whatever, they're right there in front of me. So if you don't have a lot, try and integrate them right into the category. If you do have a lot, then you're probably gonna wanna go with a catalog um, so I, I pulled out my catalog here to kind of, one thing I didn't talk about was dividers. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. But so this is an example of, of what a catalog might look like. And again, this just goes on my scrap rack and it will direct me to everything from dies and stamps and punches to embossing folders and, um, All my dies and stamps that came with them in my die stamp and supply organizer. But the cataloging out where they're out where they're visual, right? Because they're just so, so in embossing folder example of it right here. The backgrounds on the embossing folder is stored. Um, so super easy. You also find um, you know by seven six pockets, which are again four by six and five by six. But you're going to want to start. With with a base, a little bit of a variety of a few of our pages. They're the most common ones. And they kind of work through. So we'll go into the catalog, the first section in the catalog, pages right there. And it gives you all the little pocket drawings so you can see the catalog. All of those things are all that there. So you, if you get the hard copy or if you just decide after you get other pockets, do I need, you'll know a little bit more pockets for yours. That somewhere along the line here, I've lost. And now my son, too. They're an awful team. So tables for my device. You can see, I just use my um, in. I if, if you write directly on your device, you something, I think it's very funny. If I walk into the kitchen and I just do something, actually, it's very entertaining. Both of them are very, very entertaining. For those of you who know my husband, who have seen him at a show? Um, you know he's a little bit feisty and ornery. He just walked in. And it's just 
Exactly. There are people who have literally of the con masses of containing that flat space over 2,300 I have birthday stickers that are in the sticker box. Do I have birthday bling? Oh, it's over here in the bling box. Do I have buttons or brass? I'm going to find it at that time and all hunting around. You can say, do I have, you know, birthday stickers? Oh, no, I don't. I need to run up to Michael's or Joanne or Hobby Lobby. And rather than things, buy them with any intention. She says, shopping and podcast on shopping with intention. So if you uh, look for that podcast. Okay, I think that that might be it. If there's no other questions, roll up the stairs from Karen to totally tiffanycom and click on the so You are going to find category at 20% off. My husband, hi, honey. For those of you who are dog lovers, I'm a K I T C H park, like a place to play. Uh, to warn you, the pictures are lovely. All right, um, scrap crack week. Everything in and scrap 20% off this week through, through Sunday. Um, you can email Scraprack double points. So that announcement to make. Next announcement, if you are on our email list, you are email that address all those places. So we're 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sleeping Network has a 24-hour craft day coming to the 16th. So if you've never watched an HSN 24-hour um, craft day, tune in anytime and help you learn a little bit more about it. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Again, a special thanks going on the block for her lovely um, testimonial that ended up in our camp.